Welcome to Ask No Way But North, where you can ask about all the miracles of recovery and the tools used to achieve them. As always, I got my man here to my right, Big John Meldrum. How you feeling today, sir? I'm great. A little bit of a late start today, but... Yeah, you suck. <laughs> you I might have forgot my laptop all the way across God. town, but... Let's start hey, we're nine, here. Let's start at 9 o'clock. We're here. It's 9.30. 9 9.30. Good God. <laughs> Good God. Happy to be here with you, sir. Um, guys, this is, I know we kind of lied to you about, about having episodes up, um, as often as we used to, but we're back. Um, we're Hacks and Frauds and Haley Randolph, our amazing producer, corporate director of digital marketing. Why don't you come on the camera? She's vigorously shaking her head now. Um, is finally taking over. She's the boss. She's going to keep us in line, make sure we're doing the things, bringing laptops when we're supposed to, <laughs> things like that. Uh, but this is our second Ask No Even North episode where we just are going to answer some questions. Um, we got a bunch of emails and we actually got our first voicemail recorded questions. So we're going to talk about that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, without further ado, let's just jump into it. What's the first question that we got? Are we start with the voicemail? Yes. Beautiful. Uh, hi. My name is Michael and work also in the healthcare industry. Actually, we've been trying to do a lot of things with marketing, and we've noticed that Google seems to have sent us a lot of notices saying that shortly they'll start banning healthcare accounts for three violations of strikes. We rely heavily on Google Ads to bring in revenue, and we're, what I've been wondering is how do recovery centers, specifically like North Point, plan on dealing with the upcoming uh, changes in Google that might ban recovery accounts from ever advertising again because it's difficult. What, how can they overcome that? Anyways, uh, love your podcast. Hoping to hear it on the next episode. Thanks very much. Bye. Awesome. And I think your name is Mike. I appreciate you calling in. What is our phone number again, by the way, so other people can call and leave us voicemails? <laughs> It'll be on the screen. It'll be on the screen. Alex is going to put it on the screen. Um, I feel like this is a question for Haley for marketing. And stuff oh, like she definitely gave me some tips to make oh, sure that I did. Oh, did she give you the tips? Yeah, she made sure so that I... Sound I stupid? Exactly. There 100%. See, that's why we need her around, because <laughs> otherwise we look like idiots <laughs> for getting laptops. I mean, I like to think I'm smart, but like, eh, I'm not going to try to sound stupid on yeah. that one. <laughs> yeah, especially on video. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, so I knew a little bit about this because unfortunately, like there in in the addiction treatment field, there are a lot of people that are in recovery that don't work a program. Right. Yeah. So like there's a lot of really, really sketchy bad actors that um, are just trying to put heads in beds and not doing good treatment that are turn and burn recovery. Exactly. Um, and they're they're all over the place. Like I would say you're more than likely to you call 10 treatment centers, maybe eight of them are going to be not the best places to go. Um that being said, like we do live in, uh, you know, it's capitalism. We do have to like advertise and market ourselves. Um, and, and the places that do it well have ways that they do it. And I, I mean, we definitely consider North Point one of those. So really what it comes down to is legit scripts. Um, it's something that we have to jump through a lot of hoops to do as well as pay a good amount of money for. Um, and, and Haley, correct me if I'm wrong, even though you're off camera, you got that mic in front of you. Um, <clears throat> but it really is just like, it's almost a, not a certification, but it's we hold ourselves to these certain standards. We make sure we're licensed. We make sure we're accredited with all the appropriate um, uh, certifications, all those kinds of things. And um, really, it's kind of not necessarily Google, but this, this um, or is it Google? Does Google do legit scripts? Google, Facebook, and Microsoft. Okay, so Google, Facebook, and Microsoft really just say if you do these things, you meet these requirements, then you can advertise effectively. Um, and other than that, it's just honesty in your advertising as well, right? Like we don't say that we're going to do something that we don't actively do in our programs. Mm -hmm. um, there's no like misleading things like that. Um, that being said, the one thing that I want to say is like, if you're looking to get into treatment or you're looking for really any healthcare, really do some research. Don't just call the first place you see, look at, <clears throat> look at reviews, look at, um, Glassdoor, BBD. Glassdoor. Yeah. Glassdoor is a great one. Um, what was the second one you said? BBB. BBB. Yep. Um, uh, and then also just like look up articles. There'll be other places you can go talk to other competitors too. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, and, and really like you'll, you'll, uh, uh, 
storyline or a narrative will start to come through about this program, whether it's good or bad, and then you can make a decision from there. For sure. Uh, so, Mike, I hope that answered your question, man. Thanks so much for being a listener and, and give us a call. And if you got any other questions, make sure you give us a call again at that number on the screen. I don't know if I'm going to be able to say it this whole episode. Alex is going to put it up like every time we do this. It's just bling, bling. <laughs> cool. All right. What we got next? All right. So we had an email submission. Um, I am sober now, but have picked up other unhealthy habits mm. like smoking cigarettes, bad eating habits, et cetera. What can I do to get rid of some of these habits that I've picked up? Ooh, get rid of them. Well, first of all, I'd say don't beat yourself up about it. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, you know, one, th one thing that we look at at North Point when we're kind of working on things, it's like one thing at a time, right? So I think a lot of times when somebody decides to get clean and sober, right, they want to make massive amounts of changes, right? I want to quit smoking. I want to start exercising, going to the gym all the time. And realistically, one of the things that we really try to push people to do is like, it's baby steps. Like somebody will come into treatment and be like, hey, I want to quit smoking. I'm like, let's get you off heroin first, <laughs> okay, uh, before we, we do that. Now, some people do do that and they're successful. But, you know, I would say if, if a lot of people pick up other bad habits, right, just because you quit, uh, you know, drinking or meth or heroin or weed or whatever it may be, um, you know, we, we do find enjoyment and other things that can become addictive, right? Working out, sex, food, things like that. I would approach it with the same type of uh, tenacity that you did if you, that you were working as far as a program. Um, one of the things that I would say is a, is a big thing is the 12 step, right? Mm -hmm. You can really 12 step mm -hmm. any type of um, issue or problem that you're having. It doesn't necessarily have to be with just addiction, right? Uh, 12 step really kind of go across um, a broad spectrum of what you're struggling with. So if it's, you know, you have an unhealthy relating relationship with food, right? There's different support groups for food. Uh, if you have, you know, I would always suggest people, if you want to quit smoking, consult with your doctor and things like that. They can help with that. But 100%, I, I agree with Cooper. It's not, it's not a sense of trying to beat yourself up. It's taking it step by step addressing what you want to fix, and then outlining a plan just like you did within your recovery. Yeah, and the only thing, I'm, the only thing I would say is like, yes, 12 steps are great, but like sometimes people can't even motivate themselves to do the 12 steps to stop heroin. 100%. Right? 100%. So it's like um, if you want to stop smoking cigarettes, it's, it's really hard to, because 12 steps are, don't get me wrong, they're great and they've changed a lot of people's lives, but they're fucking difficult. Uh, they're straightforward, but they're difficult. And so... You know, if you don't have, like, cigarettes don't necessarily ruin your life until no. it's too late. Right? No. Like, if you're, you're 60, I mean, you got lung cancer. Yeah, there's definitely different avenues you can take, exactly. you know. But if, you, if you've if you worked a recovery program, and this is for you people that, you can apply the principles. You yeah. know, they're obviously, you know, if you have an unhealthy relationship with food, right, there's different therapists and there's mm -hmm. different resources for that. If you have an unhealthy relationship with sex or intimacy or codependency, obviously there's resources with that. It's... You know, if you've taken time to seek out a program or the resources to quit, you know, using whatever substance you're using, then you can also take that same tenacity that you had for, for trying to quit that and apply it to the other areas of your life. Just people just think that, you know, I think people look at drugs and alcohol as a sense of like, you know, this is a horrible thing that I have to address. But like eating too much isn't that bad. It's just I feel like I just feel like crap. Yeah. Right. It's not it's not, you know. Eating, eating a whole bag of potato chips like every, every day or eating a bunch of junk food, it's not necessarily ruining my life. It's making me feel like, like a slug, yeah. but like I'm not, you know, I'm not spending thousands of dollars and ruining relationships and all that stuff. Same thing with smoking or nicotine use, but it's, you have to set a plan. You have to have, uh, you know, outline goals and things that you want to achieve in order to make that happen mm -hmm. and just work it. Yep. And I would say you're already like halfway there. The fact that you want to quit, like that it already sets you apart. Like yeah. I didn't, I couldn't quit cigarettes until I wanted to quit cigarettes. Um, and I mean, that goes for any addiction too. You're right? so like, gross. I fucking love cigarettes so much <laughs> still. Oh my God. I'm just I'm kidding. Listen, dude. I know we used to smoke cigarettes back in the day oh when I was vaping. <laughs> dude, whenever I vape, sorry, we're going to go off on a tangent. Hope that answered your question. <laughs> What's next? <laughs> 
That was a wonderful answer. Um, <laughs> the next question was also an email submission, and it says, I've been told that I need inpatient treatment. Mm. Um, I am worried about losing my job for taking the, that time off to seek that treatment. What should I do? I'm going to give you that, but with just the caveat that like, it really depends on like your employer, what state you live in, local laws, things like that. Um, but I know you deal with a lot of that FMLA stuff, so go for it. Yeah, so um, kind of a stance that I take, and I, when, I'm, when I'm teaching group and, and talking with patients, I always tell them this is like my little golden piece of information, like my little golden nugget I'm going to give out to you. Um, anything that you're willing to put above your sobriety, you're willing to lose, right? So I think oftentimes we get into this, these predicaments where we're like, you know, I really want to get clean and sober, but like I've got all these obligations as a parent or as a professional. Um, and so like, I can't make the commitment to do 28 days. And so, you know, one of the things that we talk to patients, especially patients that want to leave treatment early, is I say, you know, if you continue down this path, you will eventually lose those things anyway. You will eventually get to a point where you can no longer perform at work. Um, and then you will be forced not to have a job, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, for, a, a big thing, you know, I always encourage people that are struggling with addiction and, you know, they, that work component is really big because that's our livelihood. You know, we have to have money in order to pay your bills and to pay our insurance and take care of our families and whatnot. Um, but I would, I would seek resources with your, with your HR department. Uh, if your company does approve for FMLA, then that's something definitely that you can engage in. Most companies, I want to say if they have 50... 50 or less employees, they do not qualify for FMLA. But if you work for a big organization and you've been there for at least a year, um, you qualify for that. Now, what FMLA is, is it's called the Family Medical Leave Act. And essentially what that means is once you apply or you inquire about FMLA, that company can no longer let you go. You now, once you acquire about it and you and they give it to you, you have a certain you have a certain amount of time that you have to get your FMLA paperwork in, and this essentially protects you so the job can't say like, oh, you're leaving for 28 days, we're just going to fire you and let you go. So it protects your job, and if they do fire you, it's against the law, and there's big you know ramifications on that front. But inquire about that kind of stuff. I get that. Make sure, you know, for people that are, you know, worried about, you know, just the FMLA pay piece, but also getting paid when they're in treatment, uh, inquire about short-term disability. Is that a type of benefit that you've signed up for and you're paying for? Because short-term disability can help supplement some payment while you're in treatment. A lot of things, we have these conversations with patients when they come in, but they don't know about it until they come in. So, you know, if you, you know, you or anybody else is seeking, you know, treatment and you guys want to come to inpatient and you think that that's going to be a good avenue for you, and go to your HR department, um, just say like, hey, you know, I'm interested in taking uh, FMLA because, you know, you don't have to tell them right then and there what's going on, but like I've got some things I've got to take care of and I need some time off. Um, if they, if they you know, get, grant that to you, also inquire about short-term disability so that you can get that signed up as well. Kind of how it works for our facility. When, when we have a patient that has FMLA or short-term disability, you guys come in, you guys meet with us, and then you give us the paperwork and we start that process and have you meet with the doctors. The doctor has to give a sign-off on it and then we send it back to your, your employer and it's done. They can't do anything about it, so... Yeah, and the only thing I'll add on to that is like depending on the state you're in, like I know Washington State has a program that if you meet certain requirements and you become unemployed for whatever reason, they'll pay 90% of your salary for like, I, I don't know how long it is. But I mean, 90% of your salary, that's pretty massive. So um, like look into, like I, like John said, talk to your HR department if you have, if you have one or, or your supervisor as well as um, – um, contact, not necessarily welfare. I'm not sure who that would be in, in the state, but, um, I mean, Google's a great resource. Just, I would say your HR department, your HR, depending on the state that you're in, your HR department will have all the state True. laws that yeah. they need. Yeah. Cool. Hope you get the help that you need. Next question is another email submission. I am recently in recovery and my friend made an insensitive comment about addiction. I know she doesn't know any better how do I tell her that it hurt my feelings and understand addiction better? Cool. That's all you, Coop. <sighs> That's tell a hard... Her, That's a, go ahead. Tell her to stop being a beasy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, like, that's a hard question for me to answer because I... 
John will argue with this, but <laughs> like it's really hard to offend me. Like I'm not that sensitive unless unless it's unless you tell me you're going to spend time with me and you don't. You see, yeah. the, like we all have this look on our face right now. Like, <laughs> eh. um, you know, I think a thing though, like with this, is like I think everybody is kind of at a different stance yep. with. Um, how transparent they want to be with their addiction. Uh -huh. Some people are can be very sensitive and emotional about it, right? It's it's caused a lot of issues and a lot of problems in in their lives, and so it's coming to a point of like how transparent do I want to be with people about what I've struggled with? Some people will wear it like on their sleeve, you know, yeah. wear it on their sleeve. Like I'm in recovery, like I've overcome this thing. This is a badge of honor. Or the biggest thing is not everybody is at the same point as you are. So you have to kind of take it in grace. If you're willing to have the conversation with them and it's offended you, I, I you know, I'm always a big component of advocating for yourself and, and letting people know the things. If your friend doesn't know any better, then they don't know any better. You can't really fault them on that. All, and, you know, and if you're not willing to have that conversation with them and say like, hey, you know what you said was kind of, was kind of garbage and it kind of hurt my feelings, um, and this is why, right? then that's on you as much as them because then they'll just continue to engage in the behavior just like somebody in, in addiction, right? If we're not holding them accountable and calling them out about it and they just continue the same behavior, then like that's on us as much as anybody else. So my, my suggestion and my, my advice to you is make sure that you're advocating for yourself. Make sure, you know, if it is something that's bothering you, talk about it rather than holding that resentment and, and let them know. Now, if they're not receptive to that, then they're not receptive to that. Then that's something. That's a decision that you have to make, whether or not they are a healthy person in your life. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I, I agree with all that. I think the two things I'm going to add is like get used to it. Um, not most people don't understand addiction, um, and will probably say things that are like off the cuff or or you know not uh, necessarily sensitive to people in recovery. So you really do at some point like have to get used to it. The other thing I would say is like you can just, like John said, educate them. Like, hey, listen, I know you didn't mean anything by it, and I know that you, like, support my recovery, um, but, like, if you said this, somebody, somebody else might get really offended, and this is why. Um, if you don't want to, like, go down the route of, like, you hurt my feelings, you can no. just say, like, you know, this, just so you know, like, don't go to a recovery place and say this because people will get pissed. So I think we've got time for one more. Yes, we it? had one, one uh, last-minute voicemail submission. Beautiful. So. We had a voicemail submission? Yeah. Oh, Two. no, we're going to get caught off guard. Second cause... one. Here we go. Hey, Cooper and John, this is Amy. I really love what you guys are doing on the podcast. You both do such a great job, one more than the other, you know, but <laughs> making the show informative and entertaining. Just wanted to ask, you know, is this guy behind the scenes you get to talk to every once in a while? Seems like a really cool guy. Uh, I think his name is Alex. How come you guys never have him on as a guest? <laughs> oh! <laughs> uh, sure there's a great story, a lot of good insights. You know, just, uh, I know you guys bring a lot of different people on. I'm just curious why Alex has never been on your list of potential. You know, I think we've actually... The work you're doing, keep entertaining the world, bring in information knowledge. Love you guys. That I sounded think, familiar. I think we might know. I think we might know. I think we tried to get Alex on here, like when we back when we like first started. We talked about having Alex. Yeah, I think we we're gonna make it like a, a an event of some kind. We're gonna do like an Instagram live or something like that. The problem is the problem going. is we don't have anybody to work the table and be yeah, no, here. the whole thing would fall apart if Alex moved from that seat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, Alex. Do you like the spot? I mean, you're in commercials and stuff, dude. So like, I know you don't shy away from the camera. Yeah, that's true. Um. You want, you want, oh, oh all right, all right, Amy just called him out, um, yeah, no, we will, we'll, we've talked about it, at some point we definitely have to have Alex come in front of the camera, but it's also like, maybe we got to put a mask on you, just because you're already the man of mystery, they only know your voice. <laughs> I mean, that mustache is something that should be, it's you true. know, worship. You got to wear your Magnum P.I. shirt and, and My, Like, I've never actually heard Alex's story. I've heard bits and pieces. You know, in my office, in my office, I have a... Alex's senior picture on my on my board that has literally been in my facility for six years. I literally didn't recognize him in that picture. His his Timberline Timberline right mm -hmm. Timberline senior yearbook picture like in his like black suit and his tie like up on my thing like it, it's just Alex is gonna take a picture and put it right here on the screen. Put it right here in my hand. <laughs> right. 
All right, we have we officially have our first request to have Alex on camera. We're gonna have to look into doing that maybe next recording session. Um, anything else you want to say before we get out of here, man? No, brother. Awesome. Well, shout out to the two uh, voicemail callers. We really appreciate it. Again, that phone number is is right here. Two zero eight something something or something right something, something something something. Or you, right there. You sound really stupid when you say something, 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 something. 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 <laughs> All right, guys, this has been Ask No Area But North, where you can ask about the miracles of recovery and the tools used to achieve them. Have a good one. Peace. If you or a loved one are struggling with addiction, please call 208-999-4064. Views and opinions expressed in No Way But North do not reflect those of North Point Recovery or any other institution or organization. 